You're about to see the installation of a solar domestic hot water system at my house. The installation took four days. Each day is documented by a different shirt. Today I'm going to mount the tank, uh, put some insulation under it, and strap it to the wall to protect against earthquakes. I will also start my pipe run, uh, trying to get as many pipes into the wall as I can, get them insulated, and get prepared for mounting the collector. The solar storage tank is going to go here. There's some existing straps that I'm going to try and reuse. I will bring some plumbing from our storage tank around through the ducts that you see here to keep them concealed to tie into the existing tank. So the piping I'm going to use is a half inch copper pipe. Uh, wrapped around that I'm going to use a one inch wall elastomeric um, it's a closed cell insulation. The minimum recommended is a three quarter inch insulation wall. We use a one inch. We use copper pipe because the temperatures of the collector can get hot enough to melt uh, PEX type tubing or other plastic tubing uh, because we use evacuated tube collectors. Uh, during a stagnation period, um, the temperatures of the collector can get up to 180 degrees C. Um, the, I believe the melting point of PEX is around 120 C. Uh, so it's kind of safety, you know, you want your system to work. Uh, I brought with me today some of the balance of system components. Um, I have a pump station that houses the pump, some gauges, the fill and drain valves, and some sensor pockets for the controller, which I also brought today. The controller senses the temperature difference between the collector on the roof and the tank down here in the garage. When the collector is hot enough, we'll start to push some heat into the storage tank. This is the controller. Um, okay. It's just a differential controller. Is that going to be mounted next to my heater controller or something? It's going to be mounted next to the pump station. Uh, it has a small LCD display on it. So you can see when the system is working and what the temperatures are. This is the pump station. Uh, become comes pre-assembled to decrease the amount of time I spend doing labor, getting all the components together. You can see there's a cu couple of temperature gauges for the um, supply and return to the collector, and a couple of fill and drain valves, and an expansion tank will be attached to the side of this. There's also a flow gauge on here, so you know how hard the pump is pushing. Uh, there's also, I um, can't remember the name of this, gets rid of air in the system. So on a shady day, much like today, uh, the solar resource is not going to get the, the storage tank up to the desired temperature. So we have a backup water heater, the conventional water heater, that will continue to do its job. So anytime there's a heat load, the solar tank will provide what heat it can, and the backup tank will take care of the rest. We put a, um, an insulated pad under this to keep it from leaching, the ground from leaching heat from it. Oh, good point. Yeah. This is a heat pipe tube for a Mazdon system. Um, manufactured by Thermomax. Uh, as you can see, it's just a glass tube. There's been a vacuum pulled on it. There's a copper fin on the inside. There's a copper tube that goes up the middle of the fin. Goes up to this bulb at the top. The fluid in the tube never actually comes in direct contact with our hand heat transfer fluid that takes heat to the tank. So what happens is as the sun hits the collector, the fluid inside this tube will actually evaporate, migrate up into the bulb, where it will then condense, transfer the heat to our heat transfer fluid, and then drip back down to the bottom of the tube and start the process all over again. This is the working side of the tube. As you can see, it's bare copper on the back. Uh -huh. And then the sweater coating on the front. Today, um, I'm going to hopefully finish up. 
which means I have to set the tank, make my pipe connections from the solar loop to the tank and from the backup water heater to the tank. Uh, I've put wires in place for all of my sensors and I've started to mount the controller. Um, I have to get power to the pump station from the controller and let's see I need to fill and flush the solar loop uh, to make sure that there's only water in there, no air, uh, no dirt or debris and I will fill the solar tank. Once I've filled all of this, flushed it, made sure there's no leaks in the system, then I can start to put tubes in, um, turn on the system, and everything should be go. So this is the solar loop coming from the roof. This is the hot from the collector and the cooler returned to the collector. You can see the solar loop then goes out of the bottom and that's going over to the solar storage tank. Within this unit, if I can take the top off, is the pump, a couple of temperature gauges, a flow gauge, an air purge valve. There's also a pressure gauge here and a temperature and pressure relief. And then the expansion tank is looped in. Uh, there is a sensor wire that's coming through here that's going to the controller from the collector. Um, let's see, this is the tie-in between the backup water heater and the solar water heater. As of right now, this, these valves are showing that the solar loop is on. And so to isolate the solar loop, we would open this up and close these and now only the backup water heater is being used. And what would be an occasion that we would want to do that? Anytime you need to service the solar side um, or say service this backup water heater, uh, that would be a good time to do that. Do we need to watch the pressure gauges or anything? For any yes. particular signs? If the pressure ever goes down to zero. Uh, which one? This right here. There's actually a red line on here. So when I fill the system, uh -huh. I'll fill it to about 30 pounds. And should the black needle ever move below that significantly, then you just need to give us a call because the system is probably overheated, stagnated, and released some pressure. Um, do we need to worry about the other two gauges? No, that's just for your own information. You can kind of see how hot the water coming down from the collector is and then how hot the water is going back. So you can see that, you know, it's dumping five degrees worth of heat into your storage tank. So yesterday I mounted the collector. I made a couple of penetrations, uh, actually four penetrations to strap everything down. I then covered those penetrations with a sealant and then put extra roofing down on top of that and then sealed in a few more spots just to be safe. I did the same with some flashings up here after priming them with an asphalt primer and then sealed it around the pipes. See the insulation is exposed right now. I'll actually come back and cover that up with a PVC jacket to protect the insulation from UV birds, just, you know, all the elements. Uh, the sensor wire will be concealed within that jacketing, and then there's a port on the side of the manifold. The sensor wire will come in and then attach to a piece of copper inside to get the best temperature. It will also protect the sensor itself from the elements. Uh, the tubes will go where I'm sitting now. See, there's many ports where they just plug up in, rest nicely, and then a couple of clips that go down over top to keep them secure.